So in this video, we are going to look at the Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. So the underlying assumption is there are two integers, n and g, where n is a prime integer and g is the primitive root of n. Um, that is known, both are known to all users out there. So we have two users, Alice and Bob. Uh, they want to establish a session key or secret key for the communication. Uh, so both Alice and Bob knows um, n and g. Now Alice generates a local key or a local integer a and Bob generates a local integer b. So Alice computes g rise to a mod n. So again as I said Alice knows g and n so she can do g rise to a mod n. That will be some integer which we call as i a b and sends that to Bob and Bob will compute g rise to b mod n which we call i b a and sends that to Alice. So Alice actually computes IBA, once she gets the IBA, the whole thing rise to A mod M because she has generated the local key A. So whereas IBA is actually G rise to B mod N, so it is G rise to B mod N, the whole thing rise to A mod N, which is G rise to B times A mod N. And on Bo at Bob's side, he receives IAB from Alice, so he does IAB rise to B mod N and IAB is G rise to A mod N so it is like now the whole thing rise to B mod N so this is like G rise to A times B mod N so now we know from math B times A is same as A times B the commutative property so G rise to B times A mod N is same as G rise to A times B mod N so that's the reason why we say that both have agreed on a secret key which is like KAB which is same at both sides. So when Alice now wants to send some message, say M1, she'll encrypt that message with KAB and sends that to Bob, and similarly Bob can encrypt a message M2 with the same key KAB, and both can decrypt with the same key again, okay? So how to do it, an exa example. So I'll give you, let's assume N is equal to 17 in a prime integer and show everything that is needed for Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So the first step, your job is to pick an appropriate value for the parameter g, which I say it's a primitive root of n. And we saw in an earlier video how to compute a primitive root of n, which we'll also go through for n equals 17 in this case. And then we'll generate two integers a and b. Again, a is less than n, b is less than n. For Alice and Bob, as a private key, we'll compute the intermediate keys and send to the other side. And then we'll compute the final key. So let's go each of the steps. So n is 17, so n minus, so this is to compute the primitive root of for 17. So um, n is 17, so n minus 1 is 16, which is 2 to the 4. So the prime factors of n minus 1 are just 2. Okay, so the q is equal to 2, that's the only prime factor of 16. So the candidates, as I used to say, are if n is 17, the prime, uh, the primitive roots could be anything from 2 to 16. You have to test whether some integer could be a primitive root. So let's try g equals 3. Uh, so q is only 2 here. So we'll have to just do one test for each possible value of g. So it's 3 rise to n minus 1 is 16 divided by 2. So that is 3 rise to 8 mod 17, which is this value. Mod 17, which is 16, that is not equal to 1. So we can say g equals 3 is a primitive root of n equals 17. So we have now n and g, so let's make Alice and Bob choose some integers. So Alice chooses say 5 and Bob chooses b as 7. So um, the value, the intermediate key that Alice will compute and send to Bob is g rise to a mod n. So g is 3, rise to a is 5 mod 17. And the, val the intermediate key that Bob will compute and send to Alice is g rise to b mod n which is 3 rise to 7 mod 17 and uh, so essentially the secret key that both are uh, computing is g rise to a times b mod n which is 3 rise to 5 times 7 mod 17 okay so let's see the computation of each of them so 3 rise to 5 mod 17 is what Alice computes and sends to Bob and we'll use the technique of the uh, model exponentiation algorithm. So 5 is actually in binary 1, 0, 1. So we'll compute 3 raised to 1 mod 17, which is 3. 3 squared mod 17 is 9. 3 to the 4 mod 17 is 3 squared times 3 squared, which is 9 times 9 mod 17. 81 mod 17 is 
uh, 13 because 13 times 4 is uh, 60, you know, 13 times 5 is 65. So, sorry, 17 times, so this is 81, right? So, 81 mod 17, 17 times 4 is 68, and the remainder is 13. Okay. So, 3 to the 5 mod 17 is 3 to the 4 times 3 to the 1 mod 17. 3 to the 4 mod 17 is 13 times 3, which is 39 mod 17, which is 5. So, this is that IAB that Alice will send to Bob. Okay, that 5. So now the intermediate key computed by Bob is G to the B mod N. It is 3 to the 7 mod 17 and 7 in binary is 3 ones. So we'll compute 3 raised to 1, 3 raised to 2, 3 raised to 4 mod 17, uh, which we already computed here. So we can just make use of them. So 3 raised to 7 is the product of all the 3, which is 13 times 9 times 3 mod 17. And if you do the math, it comes out to be 11. So this is what is sent by bob to alice okay so now alice gets 11 so alice can go and compute uh g rise to b mod n the whole thing rise to a mod n so that is 11 rise to uh so this is 11 that's what is computed by bob so 11 rise to a is 5 that's the secret key generated by alice mod 17 and bob gets that 5 from alice so he can go ahead and compute that phi rise to b mod n which is phi rise to 7 mod 17. so now phi rise to 1 mod 17 is 5 phi square mod 17 is 5 times 5 which is 25 mod 17 is 8 phi rise to 4 mod 17 is phi square times phi square which is um uh, 8 times 8 which is 64 mod 17 which is 13. okay so 5 to the 7 mod 17 is 5 to the 4 times 5 square times 5 to the 1 which is 13 times 8 times 5 mod 17 that is 10. Okay. So now 11 to the 5 mod 17 is 11 to the 1. So again 5 in binary is 1 0 1. So we'll go up to the exponent of 4. So 11 to the 1 mod 17 is 11. 11 squared mod 17 is 11 times 11, which is 121 mod 17. That will be 2. Uh, so again, 121 divided by 17 minus 7 times 17. And the reminder is 2. 11 to the 4 mod 17 is 11 squared times 11 squared mod 17. 11 squared is 2 times 2 mod 17 is 4. So 11 to the 5 mod 17 is 11 to the 4 times 11 to the 1, which is 4 times 11, 44 mod 17, that is 10. So you see that both of them agree on 10 as their secret key. So this is like a distributed computation. You do you compute G rise to A mod uh, N and send that to Bob, and he computes that thing rise to B mod N, and uh, they agree on a secret key, and same thing from Alice's point of view. Now, if I ask you to show a global view of this computation, which is something but G rise to A times B mod N, that's what both are actually doing. But they are not doing directly. They are doing one at a time. And uh, so you can see here, the key thing behind the Elman key exchange is the uh, secret key or the sorry, the local key that Alice generates, which is this A, is not, known, is not known to Bob. Similarly, the local key that Bob generates, which is B, is not known to Alice because Bob generates computes G rise to B mod N, which for example in here is going to be G rise to B mod N is 11. So, so using this 11, it's difficult for Alice or anybody else to figure out what is that uh, secret key that uh, or the, the local value that B that Bob locally generated. So that's the idea. Same thing with Alice's case, given this G rise to A mod N, which is turning out to be 5. Bob or anybody else cannot figure out what is the actual value of that A that Alice used. Of course, you have to do a brute force approach. And remember, uh, in the reality or the real world, you are working with um, larger integers, which are 200 digits long. Okay, So just for exam purposes, you are working with small integers. But in real world, if you want to use all these things, uh, the, the size of the integers are reasonably long. So it's very difficult for someone, given G rise to A mod N as some value like 5, uh, that would be difficult for someone to deduce that A is what's the value of A, and, and in this case it turns out to be also 5. Okay, 
so uh, <clears throat> Uh, but if someone knows A and B, like as we do this problem, we know the global view of what is happening. Uh, we don't need to calculate the intermediate keys uh, to find arrive at a final key. We could directly go ahead and compute G rise to A times B mod N, which is uh, A and B are 5 and 7, so that is like 35. So we really want to compute 3 rise to 35 mod 17. Um, uh, so seven, uh, 35 in binary is going to be this. So we need to compute the uh, exponents of 2 until 32, and uh, exponents of 3 until 32 in this case. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, this is 35, right? So 10 to 35. So we'll do 3 raised to 1 mod 17, 3 squared mod 17, 3 to the 4, 3 to the 8, 16, and 32. So 3 to the 1 mod 17 is 3. 3 square mod 17 is 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 1, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. Mod 17 is 9. 3 to the 4 mod 17 is 3 square times 3 square mod 17. 3, to 3 square is 9 times 9 mod 17, that is 13. 3 to the 8 mod 17 is 3 to the 4 times 3 to the 4, which is um, 13 times 13 mod 17. This is 169. So 169 divided by 17 is this, minus 9 times uh, 17, that's going to be 16. 3 to the 16 mod 17 is 3 to the 8 times 3 to the 8, which is 16 times 16, 256 mod 17, that is 1. And 3 to the 32 mod 17 is 3 to the 16 times 3 to the 16, which is 1 times 1, which is also 1. So 3 to the 35 mod 17 is 3 to the 32 times 3 square times 3 to the 1, which is 1 times 9 times 3, which is 27 mod 13, 17, which is 10. Okay, so that's the same secret key that both uh, agreed upon. So we'll stop with this.